What's up, everybody? Couch Mills here, coming at you with a brand new Valorant video. And in this video, we got to talk about the new tournament system and how that's going to tie in to Valorant Esports because the new challengers reveal just happened and this creates tons of changes for pro players and ranked gamers alike. There's a lot we got to talk about and it's super exciting. So we're going to jump right in. But I'm so excited to introduce our sponsor for this video, Buff. Buff is the best gamer rewards program, giving you real life items simply for playing the game with over 6 million users. Buff is a partnered Overwolf app, allowing you to play to learn, supporting many games like League of Legends, Minecraft, and of course, Valorant. All you gotta do is play and earn buff points, allowing you to get Steam credits, real life gaming hardware, or of course, Valorant points. That means you can work towards getting that crazy skin you want. I know you'd be wanting that Reaver 2.0 Karambit. Now buff is super safe, no resource hogging, no mining, or anything else fishy. Combine that with the ability to record in-game highlights and the special August promotion where buff is going to give you 70 buff points for free, allowing you to be one step closer to getting those Valorant skins you're pining for. Download buff right now using the links down below. Now, there have been a lot of questions about the future of Valorant. We know that they are committed to developing the game for quite some time, but especially when we're talking about esports, we don't know where Valorant is going. And on top of that, the rank system is something that leaves a lot of people with more questions than answers, especially when Riot themselves says that the in-game tournament system will somehow link to pro play. We have no idea what that means, but now, we finally got some clarity. To quickly set the stage, you need to understand that Valorant is going into a franchise system, which had a lot of tier two scared. We saw tons and tons of tier two teams that had full rosters of good players that you probably know that were paid, salaried, had whole teams that they just basically completely pulled out of Valorant. And the reason was, if they didn't get into the franchise leagues, which only some, a set amount, were allowed in each region of orcs to join the league, then it looked like there was nothing for them, right? Tier 2 would just flounder. You couldn't play on the big stages against all the international teams, so no one would care. You would lose viewers. You wouldn't promote your org, so there's no point in investing. And that's why all these orcs pulled out. And everyone that, you know, wanted to be in tier two or wanted to be a pro got nervous about this because it's like, how do we get from where we are to becoming a pro? And then like the path to pro, the dream is kind of dead, or at least it was until now where it's very, very much alive. So Challengers 2023 basically adds a whole bunch of changes to what is the pro system and the path to pro. The first thing that you need to understand is that Challengers is a regional circuit that's going to grow alongside of Valorant. And they're adding a ton of events, like just a ridiculous number of them in many different regions. So players are going to have challenges to actively grind in, even if you're not in that tier one franchised players, people that are chasing the path to pro orgs, they're going to have something to grind in challengers. And you might be wondering, okay, why does challengers matter? It's still the same problems that we had before or the same problems that we were worried about. But the thing is, Valor is connecting challengers straight into international leagues. So basically challengers will have its own season that grinds and all of the big events are basically not going to conflict with the international league matches at all. So they get screen time. And each challenger split will culminate in a playoff where a single team will be crowned as that league's champion. Now it doesn't end there because challenger leagues within each of the three territories will culminate in a new series event to crown the best team in each territory and those teams that secure a victory in the three challengers ascension tournaments is what it's dubbed will actually earn a spot in the following year's international league. Now, let me make that clear, because I think that this is something that is just crazy that Valorant's doing, and it, it's just, it, it's gonna be so damn hype. You could be a team, let's say you're a tier two, tier three org, or a team that was made, you grind through challengers, and you're good enough to consistently perform in challengers, and you qualify for that big challengers ascension tournament, which you win. That last match that gets you in, where it's you against another team, 
The team that makes it gets into the league. You now have all of the same ability of every single team in the international league. You get the salary bump. You get the publicity. You get all of the abilities to fight in champions and masters or qualify to play in those events. Like, there's so much opportunity that is created for you. And we're going to see stars grind their way from challengers all the way to the international league. And it's going to be just crazy to watch. I think the potential here is just insane. And it really breathes life into tier two because if you create a tier two, tier three team, you not only will get more eyes on you because they're putting it on a separate broadcast and making sure it doesn't conflict with international, it gives you opportunity to grind your way and become part of the international league. And what they're doing is they're going to expand the international leagues, each one of them, by one team until hitting a cap of 14 teams in 2027. Now, if you get promoted, you're going to earn a two-year promotion. Your team is. And the team gets a lot of the same opportunity, if not the same opportunity, as all of the teams in the International League. But after two years, teams will return to their league to battle their way through challenges and ascension tournaments. But I want to make it clear, just because the team is franchised right now into the league to start off with, doesn't mean that they will stay in there forever. I think this is just a like jump start to get people excited with a lot of the big orgs that have already been the top of their regions. But eventually, these teams are going to change and fluctuate. And teams that really are the most talented are going to bubble into the league. And some of the ones that don't perform are going to fall out. And it's actually going to be just really crazy and cool because we're going to see the best talent. We're going to see the most hype games. And tier 2... Tier 3, Tier 1, it's just all going to play perfectly together. It's going to be really cool. But a lot of people are asking, okay, what the hell does this have to do with the ranked tournament system? What the hell does this have to do with me? Well, what they are doing is they are tying in the ranked tournament system directly into VCT and Challenger. So this is what they have to say. Quote, earlier this year, we shared the initial details for an in-game competitive system for you and your teammates that goes beyond ranked. The Valorant Dev team is focused on ensuring the core experience meets the expectations of players at scale. We have huge ambitions for integrating the system directly into VCT. Looking ahead to 2024, the top teams emerging from this system will get a chance to qualify directly from the game into challengers. We want to create a seamless connection between Valorant and the VCT at a global scale through a bridge of make or break moments where the lowest ranked challenger teams have to defend their place against the newest batch of online superstars. We'll have more to share on this system before the end of the year. Now, this doesn't give us a ton, but basically what this really does is gives players and teams, even in tier three, or even if you're just a really great player and ranked and you wanna build a team, you can participate in these tournaments that are gonna be built in with an in-game system. And remember, there's gonna be rewards attached to them. There's rewards attached to a lot of these tournaments. So the in-game system might not have a monetary reward, right? It might be like you earn skins, you earn whatever, you earn cosmetics. So it just gives you, you and your team a reason to grind it. But you also could earn a chance to qualify to fight challenger players. And if you beat those challenger players, you make it into challengers. And if you beat all of them, you make it all the way into challengers ascension. And if you beat them, you make it into the international leagues and you're playing with the best of them. So there's just a direct line and it's so damn cool. I know I might be freaking fanboying about this shit, but it's just really exciting. I'm, I'm incredibly excited for esports and Valor. It's gonna be the future. On this channel, we're gonna be starting to cover a lot more esports content. Let me know what kind of esports content you wanna see on this channel, whether it's breakdowns, VOD reviews of esports prayers, analysis of esports meta. I'm gonna do a lot more esports level content, but let me know what you wanna see. Don't miss out on getting an insane new Valorant skin using the buff links right now down below.